really, I really like the idea of Summoner's Pact in the JAC deck. Uh, the other list that someone had submitted was doing like some other cute things on top of that. And like it had like trimmed a bunch of cantrips and other things along that nature that I wasn't like a huge fan of. And the mana base was kind of weird. Um, but the, the idea of having a zero cost spell that doesn't put us down a card mid combo seems really huge. Um, cause like engineered explosives and Nox survival and stuff like that we've played in the past and they've been okay. But the fact that those like puts you down a card often leaves you struggling to have enough cards to combo when you use them. And Summoner's Pack doesn't do that, which is nice. <clears throat> Uh, I think this is keepable. It's probably like the low end of keepable. Uh, Goodbye, wife. Oh, I need <laughs> exactly, Griffinson. Just people people using business buzzwords to like make them feel smart. <laughs> All right, and that's uh, basically exactly what we're looking for here, right? I can. Uh... Do I want a top top here even? I almost want a top top here. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go top top. And then pass the turn. A lot of the Delta matchups are hard. Um, Grixis, Death Shadow, things like that. Things that have counter magic and discard are very difficult matchups. Yeah, main deck explosives has been great. I've been playing uh, main deck explosives uh, in most of our builds for a while here. So they, uh, they thought scoured us, which feels really bad. That's generally a move that's too cute, but uh, they're going to get paid off for it here. I'm actually just going to move on. I don't feel like playing against Grixis Shadow. This matchup, this matchup is really rancid with this deck. And Grixis Shadow is like a random tier 3 deck, so I'm not, just not going to play it. I don't think it even strictly means a ghost, but the matchup's terrible. I'm just not going to play it. And it's, honestly, the Grixis Shadow matchup with this deck's probably even worse than the Burn matchup. The more the more I play the Burn matchup, the, the more I feel like... <coughs> Is actually close because we can steal game once occasionally. Sure, every time I throw a tier three out there. No, I conceded because uh, Grixis Shadow is an impossible matchup. I'm just not going to play it. In, in my experience playing Magic, going top, top, and thought scouring your opponent is wrong almost every time, but I'll take it. It's definitely one of the best decks in modern. I think that's a pretty pretty far stretch from the truth. I mean, it's like tier playable. Like the, I like every deck we play on stream. It's, tier, it's definitely tier playable. Yeah, Grixis, Grixis Shadow is good against... You know, here's the reason why Grixis Shadow isn't good in Modern anymore. So, the reason why Grixis Shadow was good in Modern was it was really punishing against spell-based combo decks like JAC and Grishelbrand and Storm. The problem, or the reason why that's no longer acceptable anymore, is that Humans is very good in all of those same matchups. So, basically, Humans is the deck that tends to have better matchups against the generic field while having similar good matchups to Grixis Shadow. But it didn't a landfall. Thank you, Colin, for the bits. I appreciate it. Burn's a good pickup here. Sacred Foundry tapped is interesting. Like, Sacred Foundry makes your head go to burn, but like at the same time, this could just be just Kai, right? Mardu is Sacred Boundary. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. Hey, Bredeman. Thank you for the $20 donation. I appreciate that. I assume that's said something to the queue. 
Keep up the good work. Can we add five color unplayables to the queue? Sounds good. Eternal Witness is actually kind of a sweet addition to the deck against these uh, Grandy Interactive decks. It's an interesting pickup. Well, since we just drew that, I think I just uh, I just cast that, grab my JAC, and then pass the turn here. The Mardu matchup's not nearly as bad as Grixis Shadow because we get to bring in four Ley Lines against them, and they're only... Super meaningful form of disruption is discard spells, so Leyline of he keeps them pretty firmly in check, which is nice. Yeah, I mean Grixis Shadow is like one of the decks that's playable in modern. It's good it's good against a it can win against a variety of things. It has a nut draw on the back of Team or Battle Rage. Well that's that's aggressive. Okay. Um Yep. Huh. They must not realize they're almost dead. They must they must not be aware of the fact that like we can kill them from here. This is these are these are the percentage points you gain by playing a deck like this against, you know, people who may or may or may not necessarily know what your deck is doing specifically. Always remember to float man in response to your Cerulean Wisps because you're gonna get to untap your guy again. Perfect, yeah, Noble, Noble Hierarch is fine. Birds of Paradise might be slightly better. Summoner's Pact is sweet, so... I'm gonna go ahead and make green here, I think. And we're, we're definitely just like in it to win it this turn, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and Summoner's Pact here. And I'm gonna Pact before I Serum Visions because I'm gonna have to be shuffling here in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna ditch the Abundant Growth for now, I think. Because I have enough mana at this point that I think I can go ahead and uh, I believe my articles usually publish an hour from now. I don't have a 100% accurate answer to that though. Let's lead on Serum Visions here. Yeah, if if Pact could get um, if Pact could get Fate Stitcher, this deck would just be completely cracked in half. No, not close. And then I think I'm actually just going to loot through this Eternal Witness. I think I'm going to loot through the Eternal Witness here. And I want all of these spells. All these spells are basically free, right? Like they cost one mana and they make one mana. We're looking for, we're looking for a Fate Stitcher at this point. Uh, not really looking for an Ascendancy. It's another Ascendancy. All right, so we're going to go bottom, bottom here on these. I wonder... I could Glittering Wish here, and then... I could Glittering Wish and then draw two. But actually, the Glittering Wish is just going to cut half my clock off, ideally, here, right? It's going to let me do... Do some stuff. Perfect. More, more Summoner's Packs sounds A-OK, -okay, actually. So I'm actually going to go top, top here. And then I'm going to go ahead. So they're, they're actually dead at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and float green. Totos, thank you for the bits. I'm going to go ahead and Summoner's Pact here, which untaps this, which lets me loot through this, which is nice. And then this goes and gets me a random creature and then i get to go ahead and make red here and then i get to go ahead and glittering wish and i get to go ahead and untap and loot and then i get to go ahead and grab flesh blood here 
So, and again, my opponent definitely should have, this is gonna be, yeah. so cast blood, choose a creature you control, deal damage, you deal damage to you. Yeah, so this deals 10 and then the bird attacks for 10. That felt really clean. The packs were really good there. Just like wasn't struggling for mana or cards at all during the combo, which is nice. Which is nice. Generally, you struggle for one or both of those things. So this is ten out of ten a line of sanctity matchup. I don't think it's a Thrag Tusk matchup. Yeah, I have I have trimmed nagging thoughts. That's the that's the like what you have to what you have to give up to fit the pack set in the Eternal Witnesses basically. Summoner's Pact is basically, it's a way to keep cards flowing and generate extra mana, which is nice. Twin Flame's probably pretty bad here, and then Trim and Opt, maybe. So I think this is the plan. You can Pact for his Ascendancy to pitch, right? So I think it's just Ley Lines in. Abundant Growth is a cantrip that randomly fixes your mana. Elmarian, thank you for the another nation. Congrats on the top eight finish. My humans company deck is coming up with I I have I have literally so Elmarian, I actually already have cards for it. And I, I looked at it this morning. I was like, there's no way this deck shouldn't be playing Bugler. So I actually cut the red splash and I pushed it around and added added for Bugler and some other stuff. So I am I am ahead of you, don't worry. Don't worry, I got you. Thank you for the support, I appreciate it. Abundant Growth is a cheap spell that not only fixes your mana, but makes your gemstone mines a little bit more playable so they don't they don't give out on you as often. So my opponent could have avoided dying there had they just edicted the bird. They didn't know how scary our bird was though. We don't need to be able to go infinite in this matchup, so I think we could trim the Twin Flame. Twin Flame's interesting because it like can, it's kind of like a third Fate Stitcher that loots when you cast it if you already have a Mana Dork in play. Uh, this hand could potentially be risky, but I'm definitely going to keep it on the draw, especially with this, uh, this Leyline of Sanctity. So I'm going to lead on the gemstone mine because I can abundant growth it here. And for those that aren't familiar, the way abundant growth on gemstone mine works out is basically uh, this will have two options to tap for each color of mana now and one of them but won't remove counters. Sounds good, Marion will do. Yeah, we played slivers last night, JMP. I think this hand's plenty keepable even with the one land. Like, we get a draw step, we get an abundant growth, and, like, we have a bunch of redraws into lots of other cantrips, right? Like, we have four slights, four serum visions, and an opt that are redraws. And even, like, mana creatures are, like, okay draws to a degree. Ooh, they hit the wear tear. Hitting the wear tear is scary. It's a good draw. Did you hit the wear tear, or did you mean to tap for red? Morning, Pythreon. Did you hit the wear tear? If they didn't hit the wear tear, Ley Line plus Sylvan Carry added is going to be incredibly hard for them to interact with. Hopefully it's just Pyromancer. So I just like put my O3 into play and just like block your 2 1. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good for us. And then we just like need an ascendancy basically. Hollowed Fountain here. Eternal Witness can even pick us pick us back up lands, which is sweet. Oh, that sucks, Bob. You don't think I put slivers up unless you're totally missing it. Did I call it meat hooks? I know I did I forget to publish? I thought I hit publish. It's definitely up there. It's got 700 views, JMP. Should be the last video on my channel. I added a bunch of playlists last night, which might clog up my channel feed.
block. Taking the taking the uh, the what's it called off the table does mean that my opponent is going to be able to uh, edict me with a Liliana because they took the Leyline off the table. Let's see if they have another discard spell here or not. The deck has a lot of those. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yep, our cards are lining up well into us here. We had a good hand, but their start was much better. No blocks here, go to 13. Lean on this and see where we get. Not particularly far, apparently. We're hoping to draw like a non creature spell and then like have a JAC on top of our deck here. Yeah, I need to make it so the playlist updates probably don't appear in my feed. I uh, formatted a bunch of stuff to add to the website last night. That kind of sucks. So, like, this Glittering Wish, because we already pulled an Ascendancy out of our board, isn't a copy of Ascendancy, which feels a little bit bad. I think I'm gonna go bottom top here. I'll play this Temple Garden and pass. This is technically a non-creature spell that I wanted for Christmas, but still doesn't feel very good. Just a collective brutality. Does blank that at least, which is nice. So I'm taking three this turn. Yeah, you actually cast Ley Lines in this deck pretty often. It's kind of fun. Well, that's terrible. I guess I'll take that and cast it. Probably dead here. Got ripped apart a little bit. This hand's a good example of, like, why I think two Fate Citrus is exactly the correct number in this deck. Like, drawing... Drawing uh, Fate Stitcher feels really bad. You, like, you want enough of them in your deck that you can, like, draw into them while you're comboing, but you, like, don't want the enough in your deck that you're going to, like, draw multiple of them. All right, very dead. Damping Sphere 2, huh? That's tough. Um, hmm. Do I want Abrupt Decay if they're also on Damping Sphere? Very possibly. No, I think that's just silly, Nick Knack. I, I think that's silly. I'm going to bring one Decay in. Hopefully the last stopped. Yeah, playing Damping Sphere in their cantrip deck's a little weird. I guess Faithful Zoning technically isn't a cantrip, and like their deck full of one mana spells is a little strange. Their Tron matchup's pretty bad though, so I guess it doesn't surprise me that much. Um hmm, the Rex Sage might be a better idea than the Decay. This is close. I think I'm supposed to mulligan. Like if it's close and it doesn't have a ley line and you have ley lines in your deck, I think you're supposed to mulligan. Doesn't matter, we're fetching. Um I think there's a good chance my bird just eats it on one. So I'm actually going to lead on the Serum Visions here to give myself the highest possible chance to hit my second land drop. If they don't have a wear tear right away of this game, the Ley Line should do some work for us. 
Hopefully they've been discard spells with this, implying that they don't have a wear tear. Usually this deck only has like two copies of wear tear at most on the sideboard. They play some of them to interact with uh interact with Leyline in the Void, generally speaking. And Damping Sphere is a very good magic card. Marty Pyromancer is definitely on the harder side of the matchups for this archetype. The, uh, the heavily interactive decks can give you give you some trouble. I mean, anything's fine for an F and M deck. That deck doesn't have Brainstorm in it, so it's probably not very good for, like, a big tournament. But for FNM, it's like, whatever, have a good time. Sweet. Don't sweep my birds. Don't do it. Have a heart. We're tr we're trying to combo some nerds. It's not it's not going too good, chat. This is a combo deck that never that almost never relies on the graveyard. Is the big appeal to it. It also gets to play things like Glittering Wish in the main deck, which gives it a little bit more flexibility to answer things like this when they don't have the perfect amount of disruption around them. Fortunately, we've had pretty, pretty oppressing amounts of disruption surrounding by the surrounding the Damping Sphere. I have children. I have two children under five. I am perpetually tired. It's like a state of being, basically. I mean, the good news is they don't have any pressure going, at least. The Thrag Tusk in the sideboard is an attempt to see if that card can make the burn matchup better. Declan. We refer to it as Declan O'Clock. It's about happens about 6 a.m., Sometimes 5 a.m., you know, depending. You want to lead on Manamorphose here. See if we can just, like, rip the Ascendancy naturally. Get it into play. The fact that they left Sacred Foundry up makes me feel like they probably have another wear tear, which is probably bad for us. Like a thought Caesar or a bolt here. Yeah, people see things like Fate Stitcher and they tend to bring in cards like Nile Spell Bomb, which is an advantage to playing an archetype like this. Like they board in cards that like generally don't have, don't have that high of an impact. Like some games we really lean into Fate Stitcher, but a lot of them it just doesn't matter. Yeah, we're not we're not beating a sweeper, Matawad. And I the more more mana creatures makes comboing easier. Deal. If we hit an ascendancy here, like a good series of cards actually lets us go for it. No, we had a gemstone mine that died.
the Omni Z with the 12 month tier three resub. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Take up your sword and shield and defend the land from Twitch chat. Lord knows we need it. Uh, be sure to, uh, we have the fancy Google form now for adding new decks to the queue. So be sure to fill that out if you've got something you'd like to see play. Alternatively, if there's something already in the queue you'd like to bump up, just drop me a private message and we can take care of that. So the thing I'm in the tank here about is, do I want a Summoner's Pact for an Eternal Witness? Probably not. Probably not. I'm just going to pass the turn here. I'm holding the Gemstone Mine in my hand here because... I want to be able to discard that to Liliana the Veil, should they play him plus her. Pact is not dead mid-combo. Pact is very good mid-combo because it is a free magic card, isn't it? It costs zero mana, and it draws another card for us in addition to looting. Uh, Sully Gnome is the, the name of the Twitch website. Yeah, yeah we're pretty dead here. We would have hit it last turn or can tripped into it or even glittering wished into it. We would have been okay, but there's like not going to have the critical mass we need to go off at this point. Like they have too much pressure now. Day late and a dollar short. We'll drop it into play here and on the off chance it doesn't die right away. We could hit a spell and do stuff next turn, but it's not looking good for our hero chat. It's not looking good for I'm going to concede to a wear tear here. No, I don't think Mardu in general is that bad of a matchup. I think when the opponent has wear tear every game and damping sphere every game and discard spells every game, like that that amount of disruption, the way their draw lined up in Dards, I think was very good. That's literally what my my submission form does. Jog, jog, jog all out. It uh, it submits to uh, the the form that you fill out that is linked on my website. All right, we are we are still live to drawing a non-creature spell and going off next turn. So please, yeah, one shot. Draw land and die. Mana morphos. Let's go, chat. All right, so you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do 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 do. Hey, drum drum, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. So we got two shots to draw a non-creature spell to keep going. Hey, look at that. We're gonna get to keep going. All right, so let's make uh, white and green mana here. We're gonna go ahead and make green and make blue. Untap this. Let's uh, let's buckle up, chat. You ready for ready for my wild ride? Do, 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 do. And we've got we've got like arbitrarily large amounts of mana at this point, so I'm probably gonna start diddling their elementals. And again, we could brick off here. We need to hit a non-creature spell. All right, Eternal Witness actually actually lets us keep going too, right? Because it's gonna let us pick back up a non-creature spell, which is nice. I definitely, uh, there's two Eternal Witnesses in my deck right now, right? Yeah, so I think I actually, I think I have enough mana going that I want to just get Summoner's Pact here, right? Pretty confident I just want to get Summoner's Pact here. Because Summoner's Pact lets me get another Eternal Witness, which lets me get another spell back. And these give me, this gives me a loot while I do this since I have a dead card in my hand. So I get to get Eternal Witness here. And then I get to make copious amounts of green and various colors of mana. Diddle this. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Actually, don't we don't actually even need to like fully combo here, right? Because we have three attackers. So we got two shots to find a non-creature spell here. We have enough mana that even just drawing Leyland of Sanctity is fine at this point. Glittering Wish should mean that we're in the clear. I would like I would like the record to reflect. 
how much disruption we beat this game. I would like I would like the record to reflect how much disruption was beaten this game. Is this an every this deck does have a lot of cards that I love in it at this point. You are not you are not wrong. I'd love to do this. I would like a scar scale ritual. I would like to diddle you. Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. They had they had a ton of disruption, but they didn't have pressure until it was mostly too late here. Uh, and they're getting they're getting close to dead at this point, right? Like I get to go ahead and diddle I diddle this, and they're they're actually dead to this next spell, right? This is this is I should I should technically play around Slaughter Pact here. I said GG's, GG's opponent. All right. If they weren't going to concede there, I was going to keep going as much as possible so I could kill them with just two creatures. Although I guess I was already at that point, huh? My wife thought I was crazy. Nice freak. Does Pact make this deck more consistent? I think it might. So Summoner's Pact... Again, we we talk a lot about making meaningful changes to deck to solve problems that they have. And Summoner's Pact solves the issue of this deck not having enough mana mid-combo. It's a free card that untaps all your creatures while Ascendancy's out. And it also is card neutral while it does it because it gets a creature for you. So I think, I think Summoner's Pact is probably a good addition to this deck. This hand's pretty mediocre. Double Fate Stitcher just really sucks. Pact gives you a much better chance to kill people on turn two, like to an, to an absurd degree. To an absurd degree does Pact give you a chance to kill on turn two. Turn two, turn three kills. All right. All right, Celestial Colony. Settle in, kids. It's going to be a long one. Hopefully they tap out for something stupid like... Uh, Search for Azkanta next turn, and then we get to stick Ascendancy. I mean, like, one main deck silence doesn't change change that much. Like, you still have to draw it. I've got three copies of... Three copies of silence on the board. I'm going to start with the Manamorphose here. Every time I hear you talk about Holland Fountain decks, I get a little sad that I built Blue White Miracles. I mean, there's certainly something. Just gonna go ahead and pass here. But like, there's a non-zero chance we can even just even like play this ascendancy through a logic knot next turn, which would be great. It's neat design space, Flight of Whales. You didn't bolt my bird either. That's so good for me. Yeah, the, the problem with Blue White Miracles isn't Terminus. Terminus is an objectively good magic card. The problem with Blue White Miracles is the rest of the cards that go into your deck and your overall game plan. What's going on, JTinny? Welcome. I think I'm obligated to jam here. We're gonna get we're gonna get Logic Knotted and feel bad, but like next turn Cryptic Command is an option, so we definitely want to jam before they can Cryptic Command. If I would have drawn a land this turn, I would have been able to play this through Mana Leak and Logic Knot, which would have been ideal, but we just gotta work with what we're given here and hope they don't have it, I think. The fact that he didn't have a bolt, I think, makes them more likely to have a logic knot, but you definitely just wanna wanna slam here. I think waiting last turn to give ourselves the potential to play through a logic knot or a mana leak was good, but like this turn I definitely want to go for it because I don't want to give them a chance to have cryptic command as well. Yeah, we're getting logic knotted for three. Feels bad. Lit literally just explained why not to wait. Gosh, Twitch chat. Mm. 
The, the longer you wait, the more likely your opponent is to have the cards that beat you. And the more mana you give them, the more cards you open them up to have that can beat you. So like, once they have four mana, it's not just Logic Knot you have to beat, it's Logic Knot and Cryptic Command that you have to beat. So you give them twice as many cards, in some cases more than twice as many cards, that interact with the thing that you want to resolve. I mean, I played a tournament for an absurd number of rounds, and then at the end they gave me a check for the amount of money that was the amount of money I spent on the weekend. Is that what you want to hear? I spent I spent two days playing Magic, finished sixth out of a thousand people, and broke even. <laughs> uh. We didn't Manamorphose to try and get a land because... Um, if I, if I did that, I didn't have a spell to start comboing after the Ascendancy resolved. I had fun playing Magic. That's the, that's the reason I went. I went because I had fun playing Magic. Like, I was expecting to set $300 on fire, and instead of setting $300 on fire, I broke even, which is like, you know, from that perspective, it's great. If my, if my quarterfinals op opponent comes through on our split, which he seems like a decent person, uh, I'll be up a, a little bit on the weekend, so that's nice. The exposure was definitely... I need to put this pen down before I sit here and click it incessantly. Um, the exposure was good, no joke. Like, we're not beating a Tefri here. Big events are fun every once in a while. I had a good time while I was there, but I don't think playing in a tournament like that is something that I would ever want to do every weekend like I used to. Has Decklist ever played in any tournaments? Uh, I've played Just Kai Ascendancy Combo in tournaments before. We're testing a couple of things with Summoner's Pact here, but if you find, if you go to my website, you can find uh, the tournament deck list that I've played before with this deck in tournaments before. It's under the... Uh, Listed on there. Ryan, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Prime support. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. It has to do with a lot of factors, Doomfeast. Numat was streaming something that wasn't magic for a while, which lets me pick people up. If Numat and I start about the same time, he usually has more viewers than I do. But that's fine. I have more subs than Numat does. I don't really care. The, the concurrent viewer count doesn't, it doesn't actually pay the bills. Like, the tiny amount of money I make from, like, advertising dollars from, like, Twitch revenue impressions is just, like, mostly insignificant. The, the sub points, the people in the community that actually directly support me, those are the people that keep me here. No, I've never played a Pro Tour. Just no desire to set that amount of money on fire. You, if you qualify for a pro tour, they pay for your flight. You still have to pay for a hotel and your time off of work. And you have to pay for the piles of tournaments that you invest time and energy going to leading up to that point. How many subs do I have? I currently have uh, about 1,600 unique subscribers, which translate to 1,900 subscriber points. I did, JW. I'm not too worried about the person that I split with at Indy because they're a friend of Matt's, which is one of the reasons I offered the split to them. And I'm glad I did since I ran, I ran like poop in the quarters. Well, this is really sad. It's like, I have to push these because they're not green lands. Hopefully we draw a fetch to shuffle those back in. I mean, if you have the extra spending money, it's like whatever. Like if you're like an adult with a real job who has who has disposable income, like there's nothing wrong with spending your disposable income going to magic tournaments if you enjoy it. Like that's the purpose of your disposable income is to spend it on things that you enjoy. Let's 
It's not looking good for our hero, chat. It's not, it's not looking good for our hero. Why would I partner with SCG? I would, why would SCG partner with me? Like who, who stands to gain things from these partnerships? Yeah, that's why it's called disposable. If it was, if it was income you needed to live, it wouldn't be disposable. As Cedric had actually reached out to me to write a Blue Red Wizards article for SCG, but I had already submitted one to the normal site that I write for, so. What are the cuts for Summoner's Pact? I don't have a direct translation for you. You can look at the deck list without Pact on my website if you'd like to see, see the differences. That's where I would recommend going. Well, that's all right. I'm going to play the carry edit here. Magic's not even that expensive of a hobby in relation to some other hobbies. Lots of hobbies are very expensive. I feel like people that complain about magic being really expensive don't realize just how expensive some other hobbies are. Uh, it should be live very, very soon. Shh, be very quiet. We're comboing. Be very quiet. We would like to combo now. If their only interaction is Cryptic Command here, or if they only have one two-mana counter, this is real good for us. Yeah, all right. Guess who's here to jam? That pause made me feel like they didn't have another one, but we'll see, I guess. I have the logic not to. Maybe they're just reading silence. Yeah, they're probably just reading silence. That's eh, a little bit of a tilt. Got another one to jam with next turn, though. I can actually, actually, I get to, I get to jam this Eternal Witness here and pick the Silence back up now. Sunko, thank you for the three month three subscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, so generally, in my experience, um, places that sponsor people don't help them with travel costs and stuff like that. Generally, they just give you some kind of kickback when you do well in a tournament. Yeah, yeah, exactly. SC SCG doesn't need, pe doesn't need to sponsor people like that. In fact, the reason I don't write for SCG, I've written articles for SCG in the past, is that websites like uh, Gathering Magic or backed by companies like Cool Stuff Inc., they generally pay more for articles because I'm driving traffic to Cool Stuff Inc., Cool Stuff Inc.'s website, and that's what they're paying for. They're paying my article salary is advertising for them. Like that's that's where article money comes from. It's it's those companies' advertising budgets, effectively. Oh, geez, they have nothing here. This would be very good for us if they're on nothing now. We could jam this other ascendancy and go for it. Ooh, that's that's less good for us. That's less good. Less good. Am I gonna jam this? I think I'm gonna jam this bait stitcher here, actually. So Fate Stitcher is sweet in these interactive matchups because it gets to tap their lands, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this out. And this checks the Snapcaster Mage, which is nice. When is my article up today? I believe it publishes, I believe they publish at 10 o'clock. you feel like you need a fidget spinner? I definitely am bouncy. I 
Let's just not finish that joke, Edge Freak. All right, so if they don't have another land here, I get to get random stuff. All right, deal. So if they don't have an untapped land here, I'm gonna tap. I'm gonna tap this during my upkeep. Actually, I'm gonna tap the Sulphur Falls. I think we need to go for it this turn. Thanks, wizard. Yeah, yeah, I've been, having a, I've been having a good time putting all this stuff up there for sure. They have a path to exile. They might be able to do some annoying stuff here. Hopefully we get a non-creature spell here. That's really unfortunate for us. We're gonna be we're gonna be a little bit tight. We're gonna be a little bit tight on the going off here. Eternal witness maybe means we could be okay, but We get to witness back serum visions here. Uh, sulfur Falls cuts off burn spells, which is nice. Two shots at a non-creature spell. Well, if we brick here, we're dead. We didn't brick. Look at that. And there's a bunch of candy on top of our deck, chat. All right, so pretty, pretty good chance to go off here now. They appear to be auto-passing. God bless. Eternal Witnesses have been... Eternal Witnesses have been good. They've been... They've been really good so far. Just like having this kind of like value-ish card, basically. And like, we're not deterministic yet, but we're we're pretty likely to kill them here. They are, yeah, they are pretty likely dead. Getting, getting closer and closer to the deterministics. Well, I mean, to be fair, the reason why they're probably tapping out to activate their colonnade is because they, is because they don't have anything else to be doing. So, like, the reason to not play colonnade isn't because it makes you tap out. The reason to not play colonnade is because um, you just like run out of answers and then you die. Oh right, three for what? Three for yes. Three for yes. Forgot about that. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, make green. Make white. Man, we and we just have like copious amounts of mana at this point, so it doesn't really matter. Yes. But like to perform the ancient ritual of my people, the scar scale ritual. Have you thought about other green creatures do something in combat with pack? I've not. So the other build that we played that had packs in it initially was playing um what's the card they were playing? Uh they were playing uh, Ink Treader Nephilim, because Ink Treader Nephilim, Eternal Witness, Double Mana Dork, Twin Flame technically lets you combo without, um, it lets you combo without having a Jeskai Ascendancy in play, but I think, I think that's too narrow. Bales MC, thank you for the brand new Twitch Prime support, I appreciate that, welcome, welcome. We are, we are kind of getting in danger of bricking off here. Uh, I think I actually want to go ahead and Summoner's Pack first here because we see enough cards in our deck that thinning our deck out here of a green creature is actually kind of meaningful. So let's thin that out. So no normally deck thinning is fairly statistically insignificant, 
but like when um when you're going to be seeing so many cards in your deck it becomes more meaningful so i need one more non-creature spell and three cards here to kill them all right sweet so with my second fate stitcher here that's going to be lethal so i get to go ahead and sleight of hand i'm just going to make this uh 13 and this three Glittering Wish is a backup, just in case. Move to right. This is 13, 3, they're at 16. So move to combat. Yeah, that's why I'm not counting Sylvan Carry added. I counted 13 and 3. Oh, you thought I was winning before that? Yeah, no, yeah, I need a little bit more. I think I like how I boarded here. I think I like how I boarded. And one of the things I really like about this archetype is that should our opponent have something like a damping sphere or a rule of law or something weird like that that like we don't have an answer to in our main deck, the fact that we like have Glittering Wish here means that we always have access to these Abrupt Decays, which is nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. Let's run it. No, if it's not on YouTube and it's still in the donation queue, that means we haven't played it. We're actually going to be playing it uh, the third league today, assuming it doesn't get bumped again. We had uh, the day that it was scheduled to be played on Meme Monday. We had two people do cut the line donations. Thanks, Wagner. keep this i think having a lot of lands in our opener is pretty good in this matchup also like ascendancy the extra redundancy that eternal witness provides seems good so the summoners packs are just a zero mana cantrip basically they trigger jeskai ascendancy and they replace themselves with a creature you can't give the creature the mana dork's haste that's not why we're playing it we're playing it because it lets us untap our creatures with jeskai ascendancy out without spending any mana Feet Stitcher is mostly what this deck wants. It, also, it, would, it would prefer if it was Hexproof, but like beggars can't be choosers. The Blue-Red Bird deck is probably very good against that deck, Lukatog. Um, I think I'm in the market for another cantrip here. Looks like Fetch Shaco cantrip cantrip next turn. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes the card it draws is Eternal Witness. So like, if, you, if you're in a position where you have, like, copious amounts of mana, you just get to, like, keep going. Grab Steam Vents here. Looking for... Oh, you know what? I probably should prioritize... I probably should prioritize getting white mana, because I'm going to want white white, so I can just Kai Ascendancy plus Silence. Perfect. Um, yeah, this is great, actually. Let's go top, top here. Uh, the answer to that question is I don't know, Zev. The answer to that question is I'm currently playing games with this to try and answer that question. From a theory standpoint, Summoner's Pact feels like it fixes problems that this archetype has. Which is generally generally what you want to be doing. You want to be working to solve issues that your deck has while making changes to it. So I'm going to play Noble Hierarch here. And then I don't want to Fetch Shock anymore, really. So we're probably going to opt into the Silence that's on top of our deck. And then Fetch a Temple Garden tapped at their end of turn. I assume this Noble Hierarch is just like deader than dead. Why would I play Lumbering Falls? What problem does it solve that this deck has? What issue is it fixing?
Same same question to you there, Clutch. What what problem are you fixing by suggesting we add Swift Spear to the blue red deck? What what issue do you envision the deck having that adding Swift Spear resolves? That's that's how you want to approach deck building. You want to be thinking through why we're doing the things we're doing. What what advantage are they giving us? What makes it appealing to want to do? So hmm. Harden Scale is a different deck than Affinity. People just like to do this thing where they see a deck that plays the same cards and say they're the same deck. Like, an over small overlap in cards doesn't mean they're the same deck. Like, my opponent's deck and my deck both have Hollowed Fountain in them, but they're very different decks. What do I want to do this turn? Part of me just wants to jam. I think I'm just going to jam an Ascendancy here. Like, they definitely have multiple pieces of counter magic. So I think playing into the first one here is fine. And then, like, next turn, I get to go... Or at their end of turn, I get to, like, fetch a Hollowed Fountain tapped. And then next turn, I get to go Silence, play another Ascendancy. Sure. Uh, JAC is probably my favorite Hollowed Fountain deck. To set to set the bar incredibly low, this is my favorite Hollowed Fountain deck. Celestial Purge adds kind of a layer of complexity to what's going on here. That's going to be a tough nut to crack. That's a lot of card advantage. And it's going to let them start spending mana on their turn without having to fully tap out. It's probably, probably lights out for us. Tefri is so good. Card's just very, very powerful. It also means that, like, because he answers problem permanence, we can't just, like, get this Ascendancy into play and then, like, wait a turn, basically. Mm, I actually don't have... I actually don't have a way to fetch a third green source, do I? Not that I? Not that it would even be very useful if I could, right? Yeah, we're pretty dead. All right, I'm going to tweet this article really quick before we move on. Cuz this is this is what you this is what people want to hear. I even put sideboarding notes in there cuz I know that that's actually what people want. People want two things and they're disgusting. They want updated deck lists and sideboarding notes. That's all they want. All right. So What's the Pro Tour hashtag? Does anybody know? What's the Pro Tour hashtag? Is it PT25A? Is that it? Yeah, it's PT25A, okay. All right, let's pop on in here. Should we have tried to jam two ascendancies and then hope to have one in play to go off? How do we jam two ascendancies? How do we how do we play two ascendancies with five mana? Yeah, 
Yeah, round one was a was a quality of life concession. This deck has a rancid Grixis Shadow matchup. Just basically unwinnable. This is like exactly the style of deck that like Grixis Shadow is trying to beat up on. I haven't played KCI. My my general rule of thumb with decks like KCI is that if Matt Nass didn't do it, it's probably not worth doing. Don't be cute. Just play the good cards that the people that are good good told you to play. That game wasn't about missing a Mana Dork at all. That game was about the Tefri keeping the Ascendancy off the table. Mana Dorks are rarely, rarely an issue with this deck. The issue is almost always not having, not being able to get and keep an Ascendancy into play, in my experience. Looks like another Hollowed Fountain deck. I think the straight blue-white control matchup's a good bit better than the Jeskai matchup, but they're probably both a little bit on the hard side. If your shop has a lot of tryhards that like to cast Hollowed Fountain, this deck's probably not an amazing choice. This deck's very good against other linear decks. Uh, decks like Tron, uh, Valakut, Storm, uh, Bogles, KCI. Our, our linear draw tends to be a little bit more consistent and fast than theirs are on average. I didn't say specifically don't try new things. I said, I said uh, Matt Nass is an expert with that deck and has spent a lot of time playing it. So if it's worth doing, he's probably tried it. And like that person didn't offer me any reasons to play the card. They're just like, hey, should we do this? And like if they can form like a structured logical argument for why we should do something, maybe it's worth talking about. But just, hey, do this isn't a structured logical argument. It's a, just a, hey, do this. Uh, this looks like straight blue eye control. Like I actually don't think this matchup is that bad. I think, I think Jeskai is much harder than this matchup because they have they have bolts for reach. They turn the corner a lot faster. I'm going to start by casting Manamorphose here. Yeah, it's also possible, so like, I don't think Wizards Retort is good in the main deck, but it's possible Wizards Retort could be good in the sideboard too. Like, another thing that might be worth testing is like, instead of playing, um like two dispels and three negates like play a dispel two negates and two wizards retort just gonna go ahead and pass the turn here Just have like another cryptic command here. And the way the way I have this deck configured currently, it's definitely worse against like I've got these engineered explosives in our main deck. And this is just like, you know, one of the things that just like you have to play to deal with in modern. Um, you know, I've got these engineered explosives in the main deck, which hedge matchups like humans or their permanent base disruption. And like our opponent here is playing a deck where uh, we'd much rather have Silent, so I'm going to get Stone Re Wastelanded here. Feels bad. I'm going to get Stone Rained again, just be dead. Easy swap, cut the twin flame, and these explosives bring in three silence. Run it.
How's everyone doing today? Let's stand up for a little bit. I've been sitting for an hour. No, this was me starting with the configuration of JAC that I've been playing, Nathan, and then adding Summoner's Packs and Eternal Witnesses to it. So, and, and a Twin Flame. I added a Twin Flame to see if this card felt okay. No, I did not, Zanman. When I, when Cruise and Dig were legal, I was casting Dig Through Time inside of Fair Decks like a madman. Because I enjoy playing interactive decks generally. Board I must not have Jessica I guess I didn't see on their list of boarding notes. Floundering around. This deck does make some of these control decks kind of struggle to sideboard because they want their counter spells against us, but like they also want like their paths and their supreme verdicts because they want to be able to kill our mana creatures. So they don't they don't generally have like clear cut easy and easy out. I played a lot of Just Kai with Dig Through Time in it. Right. Seems decent. Not amazing, but fine. Yep. I think if I miss my land here, I'm actually going to go ahead and play Sylvan Carry Add in. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Just get my mana dorks out. They can't interact with Carry Added until they hit Verdict Mana, so that's nice. Generally, they can't interact with it until they hit Verdict Mana. Morning exclusive. That's a glittering wish in the land. Okay. I'm going to bottom a third carry at it. I'm going to keep my land. I'm going to play this carry. Ooh, I can actually mana morphose into that land, huh? Wessel Mose, thank you for the four month tier three resub. Thank you for that absurd level of support. I do appreciate it. Welcome. So I'm doing this like this because I know there's a land on top of my deck. If I didn't know the land was there, I would definitely not cycle that, but getting my land drop this turn is appealing. Uh, Wessel Mose, we do have a fancy Google form now for submitting decks, so be sure to fill that out under the stream if you'd like to add a new deck for your tier three sub this month. Alternatively, if you'd like to bump a deck already in the queue, just drop me a message in private. People that are submitting decks through the Google form, I'm probably not gonna get to them until next week. Um, I. I'm streaming for five or six hours this morning, and then I am uh, packing up and leaving for Gen Con this afternoon, and I'll be back Sunday night. Now, the scary part here is that the way we're getting set up, they are going to be able to... They're going to be able to Wrath us next turn, but I think we're okay with that. So if I cast Silence here, I can cast Glittering Wish here and then cast Ascendancy here. So I think this is right to do. Obviously, they have like Disenchant or Detention Sphere. I'm going to feel a little bit bad about this, but I think it's right to lead on this here. Feels bad, man. That's a really, really good one. Click. Click is one of the better cards out of the sideboard of Blue White Control for sure. I think if you do want to play Blue White Control right now, you should have two clicks, two Gideon of the Trials, and some number of Nimble Obstructionist in your 75 so you can just kill people. Well, that's not a feel good chat. You're probably dead now. It was our only piece of action, and we drew another land in our 16 land deck. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Good, good mix of tough matchups and bad beats so far today. 
You know, we have the basic island too, so they can wasteland us here. Definitely blue-white spirits. I like playing tempo decks, generally speaking. Uh, we are 1-2 and two in this league. We conceded a match to Grixis Shadow because we never beat that deck. And <laughs> well, at least the Moto Shuffle bug's working out for us this time. And uh, what else did I con We lost to Just Kite Control and we beat Mardu Pyromancer. But an incredibly fair league so far, which is definitely not the matches where this deck shines. This deck tends to shine uh, playing against very, very linear decks because it's just a better linear deck than most other things. It's good at racing. All right, let's play the last one. There weren't two visions on top of my deck. Good try, though. If you're going to try and correct me, please be paying attention so you're actually correct yourself. For those who are unfamiliar with Field of Rune, the shuffle on Field of Rune is not optional. So we were we did not have the choice whether or not to shuffle away the Serum Visions. Thankfully, Moto just left it there. God bless. I mean, Five Color Shadow is like a genuinely good deck, Pythreon. Like various four and five color shadows have traversed it well at the last modern Pro Tour for a reason. Howdy, howdy, level 100. Is this the same 60? No, not at all, Kylo. This is a... This is me attempting to shove some Summoner's Packs and Eternal Witnesses into the more traditional Just Guys NC Shell that I've played on stream previously. Yeah, there's a lot of people in it that like like to tiptoe around it and like get into arguments with people in their chat. It's just like much easier to be like, no, that's not correct. Let's move on. Just like give them a break. Because like some things, some things are varying shades of gray and are interesting discussions. Other things are, no, that actually wasn't what happened. And you're, you're silly for saying it. Seems decent. Got a noble hierarch, and I, I always like to refer to Glittering Wish as a slow ascendancy. So we've got hierarch into Glittering Wish for ascendancy. I don't have a strict translation chart for you. If you want to know what we took out for the cards, go look at the deck list on my website and figure it out. I'm still just casting this to get Ascendancy this turn. We're not going to be able to cast it next turn, but that's like basically fine because we need a Mana Dork anyways. Basic Mountain Bolt could be Burn, could be something like Mardu Pyromancer again. Either way, probably a tough matchup for us. Looking like, looking like Burn. They don't have Eidolon. We have the potential to be able to race them, but definitely a little bit slow at the moment. I personally don't enjoy playing Burn for a good deal of time because it is linear, but if you do, that's your prerogative. Like Things like that are often very subjective. Alright. Uh, Sylvan Curry added is fantastic. Take that one. What is the target for Entrancing Melody when playing blue-red versus humans? Whatever creature you can afford to take. Sometimes you just go early with it on turn three and, like, grab their champion of the parish that's all grown up. And other times it just, like, comes off the top on turn seven or eight and you just, like, grab their biggest thing in play. The, the important thing to recognize is that the blue-red deck is a control deck when you're playing against humans, which means the games are going to go long a lot of the time.
Like, Melody's not actually amazing in the humans matchup, but it's just like better than a counter spell is what it comes down to. I assume we're dead here. They have four cards in their hand. They're gonna skull crack us. We're gonna take two more off a of goblin guide, so very likely dead. We will get to try out the copy of Dragon Tusk in the sideboard and see if that helps us at all. I wouldn't be surprised if it's still just too slow, but we'll give it a chance. I would definitely play Blue Red Storm, and it would not be close. You should play something if you if if you're choosing between two decks that you both that you enjoy both of in modern, and one of them is proactive and one of them isn't, you should always play the proactive deck. Maybe on the other hand, their hand is all lands, and we're gonna get to kill them here. That would be exciting. That would be exciting, chat. Yeah, I agree, Alcohol. And that, and that wasn't the first time we played that list either. Like, we'd played a deck like that. We'd played a list very similar to that previously. Do 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 so i've been away from the stream for about a month or so work's been crazy any sweet new brews that i gotta check out uh if you haven't seen the wizards deck that one's all the rage at the moment deck's really sweet all right let's twin flame the sylvan carry added get this going here oh you know what i was thinking about putting this Eternal Witness into play. What are the odds they have Searing Blazes stuck in their hand? There's just like, there's just like a very, very good chance they have a bunch of Searing Blazes in their hand, right? And I just like don't want to put other creatures into play here. I feel like it's pretty likely that they have Searing Blazes right now. So we're going to try and avoid putting another creature into play. It, it does matter because they could have two Searing Blazes or they could have Searing Blaze plus another three damage spell. So like either of those things would be bad for us. You think, I think, especially with this other, this other Ascendancy picked up here and because we're able, the Twin Flame was actually really good here, huh? The, twi the Twin Flame was actually like absurdly good. No, you don't have to play an attack with a creature. You Glittering Wish for Flesh Blood and kill them that way. It's another it's another reason that this deck is good because it can win without attacking. It's another, another angle that the deck has, basically. And, like, obviously... Um, obviously, if we brick off and we, like, have to play the Eternal Witness, we're going to have to gamble, but we're going to try and get through this without playing Eternal Witness out. Uh-oh. Non-creature spell, please. Non-creature spell, please. Ding. All right. Do 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 Maybe I want multiple twin flames in the deck. The fact that it combos with Eternal Witness is pretty great too. All right, we got three shots and a non-creature spell here. Ding. That serum vision should hopefully lock this up with these scries. Perfect. All right, so we're definitely Definitely gonna go top, 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 top here. The Alpine Moons are worth the slot. Like you're, li you're literally like asking me, is my confirmation bias or like being results based like worth make it make this card bad? And the answer is no. You're being results based. Stop it. So those that that's a bad that's a bad way to think about that Nathan and the reason why I think that's a bad way to think about it is because those cards do completely different things like twin flame provides us with more mana creatures while also providing us an infinite combo with eternal witness whereas nagging thoughts is a card that helps us generate um nagging thoughts is a card that helps us generate card advantage uh we're actually just like looking to cast spells at this point I'm actually going to stop looting because I don't have anything I actually want to discard at the moment. We're just we're just looking to cast enough spells at this point to get this to 18 so we can kill them with it. Which we're, we're almost there, right? Like every one of these spells adds two. We're, just, we're basically just waiting to end the game at this point.
Could have Helix. Yeah, actually, actually, I should play around uh, single Helix, right? There's no point in playing around double Helix because double Helix, I'd be dead anyways. But good, good call playing around single Helix. I agree with that assessment. Again, that's just like basic one-on-one -on -one identifying like, can we play around this thing? If so, let's play around it. If we couldn't afford to play around Helix, we'd just YOLO it and go for it anyways, but. So this, this is gonna get Sylvan to 20 and then Flesh Blood's gonna deal 22. Don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Cast blood, target you, target you. Oh, like I said, they have double helix, they're just gonna kill us in response anyway, so there's no point in playing around double helix. However, single helix is worth playing around. Twin Flame was good there. Twin Flame made that easy. And I think without the Twin Flame, I definitely would have needed to expose myself to a Searing Blaze that game. And it was nice to not have to do that. All right, so I get to bring in all of these. The question is, what do I want to cut now while I do that? Uh, at least one Eternal Witness seems fine. I think I want to cut these explosives because playing and cracking explosives is really expensive. In my other JAC builds, I was trimming on Glittering Wish and just bringing in the last Ascendancy, which doesn't seem unreasonable. I definitely want to trim some of my cantrips here because you just can't afford to be cantripping because the Eidolon's going to burn you out. I don't think I can trim Mana Morphos because it makes casting Abrupt Decay much, much easier. Maybe Cerulean Wisps is the cut. I don't think we're supposed to trim creatures because the creatures are our best chance to go off. I could trim Fate Stitcher because Fate Stitcher is really slow when you combo with him. And like Twin Flame is like a card in our deck that like has a similar effect. I wonder if that's it. Can we play around Deflecting Palms? Sometimes you can play around Deflecting Palms, sometimes you can't. Is the, is the TLDR. I think I like this. This seems fine. It's a little weird, but this, this matchup's always been one that board's kind of weird. Yeah, one stitcher's probably fine. I like that. Now let's do that. I, I want to leave the wear tear in the sideboard because I'm leaving two copies of Glittering Wish in my deck. And Glittering Wish can fetch wear tear to kill Eidolon. This one. Get in, get, get in there. Lay a line of sanctity. I choose you. Lava boy. Read. Okay. It's a step in the right direction. Got swag Tuskerson in the opener. He's looking for lands and Sylvan carry addeds. We go Dub's bottom here. Easy, easy peasy Dub's bottom there. Whew, that's that's real good for us, chat. That is that is really good for us. I wonder if we'll see them start poking themselves in the face to try and put cards in their bin for Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah, I decided not to play the Harmonic Sliver because for the reasons you just listed. Reasons you listed are accurate. All right, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot here. Like, we get to cast Ragtusk next turn, even if they kill our thing, right? Huh. And like, we're in an okay position to combo as well, which is nice. 
Would not be surprised to see Noble Hierarch eat it here. If Noble Hierarch eats it this turn, I'm probably just going to jam Thragtus next turn. Although the Mana Morphos makes me kind of want to go for it. The Mana Morphos kind of makes me want to go for it. Although it's actually easier to win with Thragtusk in play because he just gets to like attack for a bunch with Ascendancy. Do you think next turn will be like the first time Ascendancy's ever buffed a Thragtusk on Bodo? I like Dredge a lot as a deck. I think if... I was expecting to never have to play against cards like Rest in Peace and Leyline Avoid. I think Dredge is a great choice. All right, so this obviously indicates that they have a uh, destructive revelry, right? That's what that's what that means. Smells smells like destructive revelry. I think I still just jam this. Because I can I can witness back the ascendancy after they destroy it. Can I get a witness? This explains why they gambled a little bit and kept the one lander. I don't play Crimson Wisp because it generally doesn't solve problems that this archetype has. In my in my experience, what the what you just listed is not an issue that this deck finds itself having most of the time. The the biggest issue with this deck is getting ascendancy into play and keeping it in play. We might just grind them out over a couple of turns here, huh? Just the old, the old swag Tuskerson beat down here. Nothing like, nothing like the classic swag Tuskerson, just K ascendancy powered beat down chat. We the, we the aggro deck, ain't that the truth? <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to see a second Destructive Revelry here, just because, like, they kept kind of an, an ambitious hand, so I wouldn't be surprised they had a bunch of board cards. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me too much. Am I binning? I think I'm binning the, la I'm in the land. The land's not very good at this point. Bottom, top. But still my heart, but still my heart, Swag Tuskerson elicited a trump block. This has been, this game's been a hoot. This has just been like a hoot and a half chat. Oh, Swag Datterson. Am I supposed to try and kill them with flesh blood? They get us with bolt or helix. I think I'm supposed to try and kill them with flesh blood.
This, this is not the reason Flesh Blood is in our sideboard, but it'll do, pig! It'll do! <laughs> hey, that was kind of funny. This is all I got. Flesh Blood you off my Thrag Tusk. <laughs> oh. Thanks for the one year of memes. Can I get a complimentary timeout? The Holy Helix Fossil. Of course you can. Thank you. Thank you for the year of support. I appreciate it. Thanks for keeping me employed here for as long as you have. Um, so wrap ups on this deck. I am, I am interested to play more with the Summoner's Packs. I feel like a, the Oratog. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. I feel like Summoner's Pact, along with the Eternal Witnesses, really add something meaningful to this archetype. Um, in that league, we played against what I would classify as four hard matchups and one impossible matchup. And the impossible matchup I just conceded, but we went two and two in, against what I consider to be pretty difficult matchups for this deck. Like I said, this deck is good at racing... Um, other linear combo decks and like different the various aggro decks in the format and it really tends to struggle against things that are heavily interactive and we we came out two and two against those so um you know i think if you would have told me the matches we were going to play in that league and you would told me we'd have gone two and two in the ones that we played i'd have been like yeah that sounds that sounds great um i don't know that i'd change anything before i play this again i think i think this core seems reasonable and i need to get i need to get more reps in before I, I really know what I want to do. Is Thrun in the sideboard useful? Gosh, Thrun sounds sweet. That actually sounds awesome. I'm going to throw a Thrun in the sideboard. So he's there for next time. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds hot, actually. That, that sounds wonderful. Just like the sinking look on the Jeskai opponent's face when you put Thrun, when you packed for Thrun. Like... The, the Hollowed Fountain matchups are tough for this deck, and, like, having a Thrun to dumpster them sounds awesome. I might try a second Twin Flame. This card was really good the couple of times we drew it in this league. But, uh, all right. Anyway, we're going to be moving on. I need to clip along.